Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to talk about these beautiful dark objects known as Planemos. You're going to find out what they actually do, what they are and why we have them. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click that subscribe button right now because there's a lot more videos coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is actually an example of a Planemo, and there has been quite a lot of uh, them added in the beautiful space engine I'm going to show you right now. If you go into the... Oh, I'm clicking totally the wrong buttons. If you go into this, and you go into filter, and you choose a Planemo right here, and basically then search for them, you're going to discover quite a lot. Now, what is Planemo? Well, let's go back to Earth and figure this out. First of all, Planemo uh, stands for Planetary Mass Object. Now, basically, it is an object similar, of course, to planet Earth, but with the only difference is that it doesn't actually have a star to orbit around. It is essentially a planetary object without a, without a parent star, without a star that it can, you know, orbit around to be considered to be a planet. Now, we're going to actually search for Planemos in the vicinity of Earth because I actually haven't done this yet and I would like to find out how many there are and uh, how many we can find. We're going to look for about... Um, a radius of about 100 uh, parsecs, which is just uh, over 300 light years away from us. And this is obviously based on the mathematical analysis and mathematical formulas that we have for Planemos. Now, uh, let's search for them first and let's see how many we'll find. But basically, these are essentially celestial obje objects uh, whose mass is planet-like. They're, you know, anywhere between Mercury in terms of mass to uh, Jupiter and possibly even more. And uh, they have achieved what's known as equilibrium, um, or hydrostatic equilibrium, that is, which would usually make them round. So, as you can see, we found quite a lot. There's actually at least 10,000, obviously more. And this is just with, uh, you know, within a few uh, light years away from us. So, let's actually go to the closest one, which I think is right here. Let's take a look at it. And... Um, uh, they haven't really reached uh, enough mass to be stars. They don't have enough mass to be stars. And this is why they're basically known as Planemos. They're planets without uh, enough mass to be stars. And that's really, that's really basically the essence of it. There's really nothing else to kind of explain about what they are and um, what they do. Because honestly, they don't really do anything. They just kind of sit there, they're dark, and we can totally detect them when they kind of pass in front of brighter stars. When they do that, we can see them and we can usually see their gravitational effects as well. And we can, uh, we usually know it's a Planemo if there is no star around them. So this is kind of how we found uh, at least seven of them already. Uh, the most famous type of Planemo is also known as a rogue planet, which is basically a planet that may have actually been kicked out of a, out of a solar system. And this, of course, we've seen a lot when playing Universe Sandbox 2, because whenever we start a simulation, um, a lot of the objects uh, get kicked out and they become essentially rogue planets. Now, I just noticed there was something else orbiting around this. There's a tiny spot right there, and I want to see what that is. What is that? That is really cool. Oh, wow, it's a frozen asteroid. I don't even know how I noticed it, but it's a very dark frozen asteroid orbiting around this Planemo. And we actually know that Planemos can have uh, moons. They also can have um, rings, and I have found ringed Planemos before. Uh, and I have even showed it to you in the video I made previously about the space engine updates. Uh, Planemos are basically essentially just planets. They're just very, very dark and close to being invisible. We think there is a lot of them. We actually think there is... Um, anywhere between um, a few hundred billions to possibly as many as um, 100 trillions, which is actually about 100,000 more than there are stars out there. And some people even think that Planemos might be responsible for the effects we observe from um, dark matter. So maybe, just maybe, there is no dark matter. Maybe, just maybe, it's all Planemos. Now, let's actually explore some of them, because I, I've discovered uh, some real ones that actually do exist in real life. And uh, in this game, there's not all of them are represented as these dark, beautiful objects. Some of them are actually represented as brown dwarfs. Um, so, one of the more popular uh, sort of type of an object is known as sub-brown dwarf. So, this is a type of object that's more massive than Jupiter, but hasn't really become a brown dwarf. And I think the most popular is this one right here. I think that's, that's the one. It's Cha J110913. Um, this is a very interesting looking elliptical, uh, 
sub brown dwarf. It is elliptical because it's spinning so fast. If I actually make this um, real time, or actually if I just accelerate it just a little bit, you'll see how fast it spins. So um, it's basically a sub brown dwarf. We don't really know if this is exactly what it looks like, uh, but it's uh, an object that hasn't really achieved the status of brown dwarf. So it's not massive enough. It's uh, just between the mass of Jupiter and a, uh, an actual brown dwarf. In other words, it's just a little bit, maybe a few times more massive than Jupiter. Another one of these objects is known as OTS-44. Now in this game, it's actually represented a little bit different, but uh, it is worth visiting because it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, OTS-44 is a really cool system. Look at how beautiful this is. There's all these really cool looking spots on its surface everywhere. So gorgeous. And if you actually, if you actually look around it, you will discover a lot more beauty including these really, really cool um, asteroids somewhere here that uh, at some point might even become comets because if you actually wait long enough, they will start producing comet-like tails. I don't know if it's going to happen now, but it, it did happen to me once when I was just kind of playing around with this and uh, realized that one of these asteroids or one of these um, planets and moons started to produce really beautiful red comet tails. Unfortunately, it's not happening right now, so we may have to just... Oh, there it is. Ha, look at that. Look how... Oh, look at that. That is incredible. This is even better than what I expected. Look how beautiful this is. Let's actually zoom in here. So there we go. This is uh, OTS-44. Once again, we're not really sure if this is what it looks like. But in this game, it's definitely very, very beautiful. So this is just a frozen asteroid that is producing this humongous, gorgeous, beautiful asteroid um, or, or comet that is, comet tail behind it. All right, so we also have other types of uh, planimus and these are actually known as former stars, basically stars that had their mass stolen from them, usually by another binary object that kind of sucked away their mass and uh, made them planets. And if those objects actually get kicked out of the solar system, they also become planimus. Uh, one of the more popular um, objects that used to be a star and is no longer a star is an object we actually talked about previously. It is orbiting a pulsar known as PSR J1719-1438. Now, this is a binary system, or technically it's not really actually a binary system because this is a pulsar, but what's orbiting around it really, really fast, you kind of see it zooming in. Uh, or zooming around, uh, this right here is actually a former star. This used to be a star, but it is now technically a planet. And uh, this particular object is interesting because it is the first time we've found such a really interesting composition of binary um, system. Basically, this was a binary star system, and because this is more massive, and because it's so close to this other object, it basically kind of sucked away a lot of its mass, turning this back into a planet. And uh, at some point, this will very likely either get swallowed by the pulsar or may actually end up being thrown away uh, out of the system and then become a planemo as well. So this would be an example of a former star planemo. And now this right here, WISE uh, 08551-07144, is actually the closest planemo we found to our planet Earth. Look how beautiful this is. This is absolutely gorgeous. So this is actually uh, a very good representation of what Planet would look like. Uh, it does have these uh, aurora around it, and that's because this is kind of very close to being a gas giant. This is why you see this. And in reality, you would very likely even be able to see this and um, a bit of a radiation belt around it, which would also glow a little bit as well, similar to how Jupiter looks. Uh, but basically, yeah, so this is the closest object to our planet. It's at a distance of about seven light years away. And we found it completely by accident by kind of looking at the stars and realizing something was not right. We saw these effects of gravitational lensing, basically, when you look at the star and suddenly you see a gravitational effect from something, but there is nothing in the vicinity. And so this must be a planemo. And we've seen this many times because of this object. And another uh, planemo that actually has been recently confirmed and we know for a fact that this is a planemo is known as UGPS 0722, I think that's it. Yeah, uh, 0722205403. So this right here is yet another very beautiful planemo. It's a little bit farther away from us, uh, but it is nevertheless um, a very beautiful uh, gas giant like planemo that also, I think, think in this game has something orbiting around it. Actually, quite a lot of things orbiting around it. And all of these things are very, very dark and very, very cold at a temperature of only 
39 um, degrees Kelvin, which is super cold. Uh, so anyway, so basically that is what these Planemos are. This is how you can find them in Space Engine. And there is so many of them. I, I've been waiting for this edition for a very long time, and I'm so glad that they've added these objects. A lot of them are realistic. A lot of them are actually really cool to explore. And actually, this is so interesting. Look at that. From a distance, this actually looks like a brown dwarf. But when you approach it, you realize it's very, very dark. So it looks like now as you fly and as you zoom through the space engine, you'll actually be able to see them as these really, really dim red objects, which is kind of cool. So next time you're exploring space engine, take a look uh, at one of these and maybe you'll discover something new and cool. And anyway, so hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully now you know what planetas are, what the rogue planets are, and also what sub-brown uh, sub dwarfs and also former stars are as well. This is essentially a really cool um, idea and theory because it may one day help us explain what uh, this whole black matter is all about or possibly help us understand our universe and galaxy a little bit better. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who you think may enjoy this and possibly like it if you actually learned something. I'll see you in the next video. As always, bye-bye.